Good evening. Welcome to one more Wednesday night live from the New Mexico Philharmonic. And my guest tonight is a very special violinist, Taiwanese American Richard Lin. We will start our show by listening to Milstein's Paganiniana. Wow, that was a riveting performance. So with us tonight, Richard Lane. Good evening, Richard. Hi, Roberto. How are you? How I'm are good. you? I'm fine, thank you. So Richard, I am talking to you from Ribeirão Preto, Brazil, and it's mm -hmm. now 10 p.m. here, and you're talking all the way from Taiwan. What time is it there in Taiwan? I'm now in my hometown, Taichung, in Taiwan, and we are 9 a.m. right now. So I just 9 a.m. Well, good morning. good morning. Cheers for all of those who are having our drinks and wine. Coffee, and I guess you have some good coffee. So cheers. Here. <laughs> Great to have you on our show tonight. So yeah. we from the New Mexico Philharmonic have been, you know, for the last three months doing uh, these wonderful interviews with several of our favorite artists, musicians from the orchestra and, uh, and, and many of our favorite guest soloists. And you played with us at the beginning of uh, last uh, year with the Tchaikovsky Concerto. That was a phenomenal performance. Was that your first time in New Mexico? Yes. It was my very first time in New Mexico, and uh, I was really looking forward to it, and the, ex the experience was awesome. I still miss everything in New Mexico a lot. What was your first impression when you arrived in Albuquerque and you got to know, I mean, because uh, I guess you were not so familiar with the Southwest of the United States. Actually, actually because I watched the, um, the, the drama, the series, Breaking Bad. I watched it. Yes. Before. I was really looking forward to see all the 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 places appear in the, the show so did you take the ba the breaking bad tour yes i had a really you good uh, host lloyd he took me to all the famous like jesse's house and and the, the <laughs> motel everything fantastic i did that several times also you know mm -hmm. um even i you know eating at the the, the place the pollos hermanos 
But I have to say, you know, Breaking Bad does not do justice to Albuquerque <laughs> because it's yeah, such a beautiful it's a very nice city. city. Yes, and yes. they they never show the beautiful places, you know, like the <laughs> Sandia Mountains, you know, the tramway all the way up. So um, anyway, I I'm glad you got to see more of uh, Albuquerque in person, and yeah. it was wonderful to have you. I mean, that was such a phenomenal. Uh, concert because it was an all Tchaikovsky concert. We we got to do the violin concerto in the first half and the symphony number no. four in the second half, and I was so you know happy in how the orchestra performed and of course uh, with you there is our soloist for the first time. That was a, an incredible. We have to do it again. Yes, I look forward to it. So you were born in Taiwan. Yes. And you came to the United States My at age 16. Pretty interesting. I, I was actually born in Phoenix. Not really? far from Mexico. Yeah, I was born in Phoenix because my parents... I didn't were, know that. My parents were at, were at uh, ASU. So uh, I was born in Phoenix, but I grew up in Taiwan. And then, and then correct, I moved back to the state when I was 16. But Fantastic. I I'm American. <laughs> Absolutely. And you came first to Oklahoma, of all places, before you ended up in uh, Philadelphia at the Curtis Institute of Music, yes. and uh, later moving to the Juilliard School in New York City. How, mm -hmm. how was that? I mean, how did you end up from Taiwan in Oklahoma? <laughs> so uh, my former teacher, Gregory Lee, he was, uh, he was an, he, he's an Australian, Taiwanese. So uh, during my high school year, he, shortly taught in Taiwan, I studied with him, and then he was invited to teach at OU. So my mm -hmm. father thought since I was born in the States, he always wanted me to, to study abroad in, in the States only, not Europe, only the States. So, so he asked Gregory to take me to the, to, with him to the States. So that's why I follow him to, to Oklahoma. I was in Norman, okay. I had the public high school for one year. And then during that year, I uh, I was very lucky to be accepted by the Curtis Institute. So my second year in the States, I was in Philadelphia, at Curtis. And, I, and then I studied with the, the, the legendary maestro, uh, Aaron Roseanne. Fantastic. I mean, and uh, two great schools, two of the greatest schools in the world, Curtis Institute and the Juilliard School of Music. May I dare ask you, which one did you like more? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're a very different school. I mean, Julia Julia is a bigger, much bigger in size, but uh, more much more resources. But Curtis, I like the feeling of the like a family at Curtis because at Curtis we know each other. I mean, we live with each other almost every day, and everybody's like a really we we were like a family. And I I spent five years at Curtis, so that's more like a. You know, it's, it's more of my type. Like, I like that kind of a small community and everybody uh, is very friendly to each other. Yeah, I was, you know, I went to Julia pre-college and then I went to Julia to the upper division, but I had many friends in Philadelphia. So I would often go to Philadelphia for the weekend and it was always nice to be in that small town, that small school, you know, 150 students opposed right. to, you know, 1,500 students right, do that. Yes. So it was a completely different environment, but um, great town, great school. And, uh, and then, of course, you started developing your career, play, entering competitions and uh, performing with, uh, with several orchestras. Um, and do you play chamber music as well? I do. In fact, I have just been invited to join the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center. So we will start this, uh, the collaboration very soon. And actually, during this pandemic time, we were originally scheduled to, to do an a Asian tour. But hmm. China and Japan both canceled. But only in Taiwan, they are still planning to come in December. So I'm very looking forward to to joining them in the Taiwanese tour. Like uh, we are playing several concerts in Taiwan. So they are coming here. Amazing. I, I remember you mentioned that. 
Now, during the pandemic, you have been, been doing some quite amazing things. In this next uh, performance we're going to hear, uh, you have done recently. Tell us about this before we listen to and watch the video. Yeah, so we all know that the country locked down around late March, April. Everybody has to stay at home, sheltering in place. So we had no concert and artists, we have to find something to do, right? We, have, we can't live without music. So that's why I, I was thinking, what, what can I do? I constantly hear, hearing and watching people posting their archives online, which is very good. But I thought maybe I should do something more interesting. So I started with the project. I started to learn how to do uh, uh, computing, like to, to put all the videos and audios together and make videos to post online. So this thing I'm gonna present to you is uh, Vinyaski Caprice for two violins. But the funny part is <laughs> I played both violin parts and then I, I used the computer and a software to, to put both myself into one, uh, one picture. So you can see myself playing with both, both parts spontaneously. So it's very interesting. I hope you enjoy. Amazing, let's watch that now. So this is Vinyavsky's Caprice. <laughs> That is quite spectacular how you managed to put such a virtuoso piece together, you know, playing both parts. Uh, that must have taken you several days. Yeah, yeah. Well, the technical part is harder than the violin part, you know, like because I, you know, my my expertise is in violin playing, but not not the computer engineering. So it's it's kind of an interesting project for me during the pandemic. And are you doing more projects like these? Um, well, I actually did several different ones with me actually singing and playing. So I already did. I didn't know you sang. Uh, well, I, I, I love to sing some um, Chinese pop song because, uh, you know, I grew up in Taiwan. So my native tongue is Chinese, Mandarin Chinese. So I listen to a lot of pop music in Chinese culture. You should, should have said as a video of you singing. That would have been fantastic. Next time. Next time. You. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, do you compose your own songs or are you singing songs that are very popular? I, I mostly sing popular songs. But, I mean, I, I always wanted to, to compose myself, but just never, never actually tried it. <laughs> well, we're all rediscovering ourselves. Just last week, you know, I was asked by one of the major TV channels in Brazil 
to write uh, the title music for a morning show that they're coming up with now. Wow. And I had the, more, you know, the most fun doing that and recording. It's something that's going to start very soon. And, right. and it's funny because the following week, uh, uh, this film director contacted me asking me if I wanted to write the score for this uh, movie that he is uh, producing. So wow. anyway, I'm thinking about it because I have not composed in more than 20 years. But uh -huh. the pandemic is doing this to a lot of uh, people. You know, people are rediscovering themselves, doing other things. And I right. think this is one of the positive things about it, right? Yes, yes. Uh, now, I, I expect you to be, you know, in one of the, your future videos, to be singing and playing. That would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> now, you already played concerts uh, more recently. You were telling me about the concert you had just past month uh, or two months ago in July. What was that and where was that? Um, that was a very interesting project because uh, just like the world, Taiwan has closed down all the concerts uh, from March to June. And we start to reopen a little bit uh, since June. So I flew back from the States to Taiwan in the beginning of June. And of course I did have to do the 14 days mandatory quarantine. I stay at my stay in my room for 14 days without going out. Like for sure, I didn't really actually step out my room because that's the rule in Taiwan. That's why we, wow. we the, the virus has been contained pretty well, relatively well in uh, uh, comparing to other countries in the, in the world. But anyways, so um, the National Symphony Orchestra in, of Taiwan, they, I've been working with them several times to you know, play concertis and uh, things like that. So they had asked me to do a chamber music concert with them, with their principal players. So it was a very um, fascinating event because, you know, we, we, we don't used to wear masks all the time. I mean, some people do. Some people do in Asia. I know it, it's a little cultural difference, but we some people do wear masks even not during the pandemic time. Um, but when I walk on the stage, I what I see is like a full house with people wearing masks, and that's pretty fascinating to me. It's like it's like the the view that I've never seen before, and suddenly I feel kind of a a kind of a touching feeling because. I feel like everybody is trying so hard to help themselves and also help everybody else. So it's like people are so united together. And I'm about to play music that I love to express my way and to show my value to this country and show the society that what I can do. Like as, as musicians, we, we, we always want to um, express from the, the deepest place in our heart, right? To, to touch people, to to um to calm people, especially during this terrible time. So I feel like uh, my value was proved during that time. So I, I, it was a very fascinating experience for me because after oh, after wonderful. after March I haven't done any concert. So for four months I haven't played any concerts. That's like I haven't done this thing in in ten years. Like I've been constantly playing, and but this time it's like four months break. It's it's it's, it's a very uh, unusual unusual situation so it was very oh, i have not conducted since march when i did Mahler third here in brazil and right before that the week before that i did Mahler seven with the new mexico philharmonic which was one of the most incredible concerts they performed mm -hmm. um but this week i get to conduct my first concert you know since march Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm back in the in Ribeiro Preto where I conducted. Uh, this was my first orchestra 25 years ago, and we're doing an opera gala with four soloists and uh, an orchestra of only 37 musicians. We're wow. doing excerpts from Traviata and Carmen, and I'm so excited. There's a beautiful opera house in this town. This is the third largest opera house, wow. and. Um, so uh, we're celebrating their 90th uh, anniversary and I can't wait, you know, Not uh, but I have to say it feels kind of out of shape, wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially when you have to rehearse with a mask, you know, 
but wow. uh, but I understand. We just hope that very soon we'll be back to you know having our wonderful audiences, especially in Albuquerque. You know, our audience is so warm, so lovely, and mm. uh, with the musicians there, which are so dedicated, you know, and uh, uh, and we can't wait also to have you back with us. But now let's talk about the next video we're going to watch, which is you performing Debbie C. Tell us about this recording. Yes, this is actually the live recording during uh, during the 2018 Indianapolis International Violin Competition, which I was very lucky to won the gold medal. And this is the actually my most self-satisfied performance during the first round. This is this is the, the piece Oswa by Debbie C. and the pianist was a wonderful, wonderful um, Akira Eguchi. So we had we had a lot of fun during the competition. So I hope you'll like this piece. Fantastic. And the Indianapolis uh, International Violin Competition is one of the most prestigious competitions in the world. So I congratulate you for the gold medal in this prestigious uh, institution. Let's hear Debbie Steve. such beautiful playing, you know, so many colors and nuances. I mean, that is really most exquisite. Thank you so much. Um, Richard, so in all of your experience, living in different places, traveling abroad, you know, performing in so many different countries, is there a funny story or an interesting story you can tell us? Sure. Um, well, the funniest one I can think of is uh, I think two years ago when I performed in, in uh, Kaohsiung in Taiwan, that's the south, south part, south big, biggest city in Taiwan. Uh, when I walk on stage, when I, after I walk on stage like I normally, and then I bow to the audience. And then once I bow down, I discovered that my zippers were, were down, you know? 
like I my barn was open <laughs> on the stage. Oh. oh, could you repeat that? Yeah. I missed that <laughs> because I, your video I, just I froze. Up, oh, okay. I said I said when I bowed down, I discovered that my fly was open, the zipper was open. <laughs> oh, and, no. and then I got up, I instantly covered my you know that part with my violin and then I tried to, you know, adjust it up. But that was very funny. I, but nobody discovered it. I asked my parents about it. They, they, they said they didn't notice. So it was good. <laughs> it was very oh funny. Oh, my God. See, <laughs> yeah. that happened to me. I think only the orchestra would know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have also several um, interesting <laughs> instances. But but it's not funny, though. Uh, it's kind of scary, actually. Uh, what happened? About five years ago, I was traveling. I was still studying at the Juilliard for my master's degree. But I had to travel to Japan, you know, from New York, just to play two concerts. So I went to Japan, and uh, actually was in Fukuoka. Um, I had terrible jet lag because you know the time difference, like thirteen or fourteen hours. So I had terrible jet. Lag. So I remember I was playing Brahms concerto, and I was waiting backstage for the orchestra to finish the the overture. I started to yawn, you know. Start, I suddenly feel so sleepy. And then, as all we, we all know, Brahms started with like a very triumphant long tutti, right? So I was waiting on the stage for the tutti to finish, to enter. And then I started to feel so sleepy, so tired. And then once I entered the very, you know, the very beginning entrance of the violin solo, I, I had a memory slip in the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. That was so terrifying. And so after that, every time before I go on stage, I had to chew that the strongest, the min, mintest, mintest gum before I go on stage. So to keep myself awake, that's that's my tradition. That's, that's my ritual now. Like every time before the concert, I had to chew gum like to keep myself awake. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. You know, I always have one or two espressos right before I go on stage, you know, because I know exactly the feeling of jet lag and trouble. So, but Richard, um, before we listen uh, to one of the last videos, let me just uh, run to you a few questions. And uh, so we get to know you a little better. Sure. Uh, tell me from your favorite violinist, Heifetz or Oistrak? Well, when I was young, Oistrak, but now Heifetz. <laughs> Oistrak when you're young, but now Heifetz? Yeah, it's kind of upside down, right? <laughs> exactly. Usually it's the opposite. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love both of them. Uh, Tchaikovsky Concerto or Brahms Concerto? Brahms. Brahms, you know, Brahms is a very meaningful concerto for myself because uh, I won my first, well, actually, I won the second prize of the Michael Hill competition in New, New Zealand in 2011. That was my very first international competition. And I played the Brahms in the final round. So that Brahms is always has, a, has his uh, role in, in my career. What does it mean to be a great violinist? Um, humane, sincere, and uh, having personality. What if you do, if you have all these things, but you are bad intonation? Oh, and <laughs> well, that's perfect prerequisite. Intonation, rhythm is prerequisite. <laughs> uh, a book that you love. I'm sorry. A, a book, book that you, um, yes. I like. I'm currently reading. Um, this is uh, well, actually, it's a Chinese translation, but this is about you know, Homo Deus. It's written by a, a Jewish. Um, scientists, Yuval Harari, Yuval Harari. This is about um, history, human history. What's your favorite movie? Harry Potter. Besides Chinese, what's your favorite kind of food? <laughs> oh, Korean, probably. Korean, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you like opera? I do. I do. What's your favorite opera? Well, I have to say it's kind of shallow, but um, Magic Flute. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's a good choice. That's an excellent choice. 
What's your favorite city? Uh, my hometown, Taichung. But I really like Albuquerque, though, sincerely. Fantastic. Well, you're certainly welcome in Albuquerque, you know, anytime. And uh, we would love to have you back. Thank now, you. Now, we're going to have a treat from Richard tonight, my friends. Um, Richard has agreed to play for us live. Can we believe that? And um, so uh, as you get prepared, tell us um, what's, in, what's the instrument that you usually play on? Well, this is a 2017 uh, modern violin made by a New Yorker, uh, Samuel Zygmuntowicz. And this is the violin that I play with an orchestra, playing a recital because it has huge percussion and a very depth, the deep, deep tone. So that's that's what I like about this violin. But you know what? I, I happen to have a Stradivarius beside me. Oh, <laughs> you, you just that? happen to have a Stradivarius beside you right <laughs> there in your room. Oh, <laughs> okay. So how about playing the Stradivarius for us? And which is Stradivarius is this one? This is a 1683, uh, the Gingo Strad. So this is a part of the prizes from the um, the Indianapolis competition. This violin used to used to own by the legendary pedagogue and and concertmaster violin virtuoso um, Gingo Joseph Gingo, and he was the founder, also the founder of the Indiana, Indi Indianapolis competition. So this this violin has a very spiritual meaning for for the competition and for actually for the state actually because Joseph Gingo is one of considered one of the uh, greatest pedagogue ever in the state from the from the state. So this is a very meaningful violin. So. This is a wonderful treat. Thank you so much for performing yeah. live from Taiwan to the world. And uh, what are you playing for us, Richard? I'm playing a, a little movement from the Bach uh, Suite number. Well, it's actually party number three. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Roberto, you're muted. Sorry, we couldn't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. That was amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And um, so it was my pleasure to interview Richard Lynn tonight at the New Mexico Philharmonic's Wednesday Night Live. Richard, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, on stage, out of stage, so we can really have fun together. Yes. So please come back to Albuquerque. And yes. I'd like to thank everybody who listened to us tonight, people from all over the world. Of course, now we also have fans in Taiwan, in the Asia countries, uh, in the United States, in Brazil, in Europe. 
So thank you all so much. Uh, have a great night, everyone. And I'll see you next week with another great Wednesday Night Live. Good night, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, everyone.